Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this service for the third Sunday of Advent. Um, have you ever had one of those weeks? I'm having one now. Um, as you will see, we have no screen. Unfortunately, um, due to a load of the power cuts and the problems we had with power failures over the last week, it's lost its settings. So it's now dangling, and we're waiting for the engineers to come along and put it back in place. Which is why I'm standing here and not there, because although they've told us it's safe, they've also said it could come down, and I don't want it coming down on my head. And I don't think you do either, uh, because it might be a bit messy. We wouldn't like that. So I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with us all doing everything from here. Um, And people online, I am sorry, no words. Um, You'll just have to follow us, but welcome anyway. I hope you'll be able to engage uh, as you usually do. It also means that although we have hymns, they're on a CD, so you won't get pretty pictures behind them, but you will have noticed you will have been given a piece of paper with the words of the hymns on them. So um, you can follow them as they're being sung, or quietly hum them behind your masks. I won't know if you do. So before we start, I have one or two or maybe 101 notices. I'll whip through them very quickly. First of all, as you've seen, there's no video. Um, Next one is, as you probably are aware, normally we would have our village carol service this afternoon. That can't happen because we are limited with numbers. So instead it's going online and it will be available on our website and Facebook pages and also the Baptist Church's um, Facebook page and website and possibly even the one for the parish council. It will be available from three o'clock. You will see people from this congregation taking part. Um, We've got lots of carols so you can sit there and belt out the carols to your heart's content so that's the carol service. I think some of you will have already been had your shoulders tapped for help with delivering the Christmas cards. If you haven't and you're able to deliver some in your locality, it'd be great if you could help us. Uh, we've had problems with those as well because uh, they were sitting at the printers who didn't know whether they were okay to deliver them. So they only came in yesterday. Um, we also need help with manning the stall or the stand for the village children's Christmas trail that will take place next weekend. So it's taking place between 11 and 2, I think, next Saturday. We've got that covered. But we need help between 11 and 2 next Sunday. And it literally is a case of sitting underneath the lich gate, holding out, giving out clues, and then giving children prizes when they come back. Um, The trail is there's going to be a load of pictures around the village, quite large posters of people um, to do with the real Christmas story. So no Santa, no elves, just the real Christmas story characters. So if anyone would be prepared to help for an hour or so with that, that would be really helpful. Uh, If you can have a word with me, then I can let the person who's coordinating it do it. Um, Next one. I should have written these down for you, sorry. I'll put them on the website. Um, Sunday the 20... No, Monday the 21st is the longest night, shortest day. And we will be having, at 6 o'clock, a longest night service. Some people call it a blue Christmas service. And it's just a quiet, reflective service where you can come along and own up the um, sadnesses that you might feel this Christmas. Maybe thinking about the empty seat at the table or the things that you would usually um, really enjoy at Christmas, but you're not going to enjoy this Christmas. So that's 21st at 6 o'clock. Just come along. It's a quiet, reflective service. Um, The following day, 22nd at 6 o'clock, there will be carol singing outside the village hall. So if you want to come along to that, we can stay two metres apart. George Bartle will be, singing, will be leading the singing 
so it should be great. And you need to book in if you want to come to midnight mass or um, the morning, the family communion service on Christmas morning at 10 o'clock. And last but not least, I have a request. If you have a Christmas jumper, would you wear it when you come along next week? So next Sunday is Headcorn's Christmas jumper day. So I haven't got one, but I'm going to be up at East Sutton. So um, it's David will have the joy of seeing all your Christmas jumpers, not me. Um, so please wear that. Right, okay, you should have an order of service in front of you. I've made a few changes, but hopefully they won't be drastic ones, so you should be able to follow me. So now, um, oh no, we won't. We'll, we'll go to a hymn, shall we? I haven't done that yet. So our first hymn is People Look East. So now is the time to wake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. As we look to the east, as we become aware of the fact that Christ is coming, he's coming at Christmas and he's coming again, to make a real difference in our lives. Let us be aware of him. Let us open our hearts and our minds to him so that we can truly engage with him. As we say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
be using the summary of the law rather than the Ten Commandments. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. So come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin." We have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us. Deliver us from judgment. Bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love draw us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jenny, would you like to come and light the third candle on the Advent ring? Yes, I'd be delighted to. There's a taper there. So if you light the pink one, so the first two... Um, and the fourth candles are purple because Advent is a season of penitence, of repentance and self-examination. But the third Sunday, which is today, is what's called Gaudete Sunday. It's a bit like Mothering Sunday when we're allowed to enjoy ourselves, hence the first hymn being a happy one. So that's why it's pink rather than purple. And today we think about John the Baptist and the good news that he brought to all people. So the prayer over the Advent ring. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way for your son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the collect for Advent. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And the collect for the day. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, just and true. To you be praise and glory forever. Your prophet, John the Baptist, was witness to the truth as a burning and shining light. May we, your servants, rejoice in his light and so be led to witness to him, who is the Lord of our coming kingdom, Jesus, our Saviour and King of the ages. Blessed be God forever going to ask Jenny to bring us our Bible reading. Our first reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of John, verses 6 to 8 and 19 to 28. The Word became flesh. There was a man from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. 
he came only as a witness to the light. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confess freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah, the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied. But among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will use the words of my lips to breathe your perfect message into the hearts and minds of each person here. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Once upon a time, there was this really important court case and the lawyer came in for the defence and he says, I have a star witness who heard and saw absolutely everything. So the judge says, OK, well, who's your witness? Bring him in. And the lawyer says, OK, I call Fido. Fido? Yep, Fido. He saw and heard everything. OK, says the judge, bring in Fido. Well, surprise, surprise, Fido comes in and he's walking on four legs and wagging his tail and sniffing quite a lot because he's a dog. The judge goes apoplectic. He says, you cannot bring a dog into a court of law to act as a witness. I don't care whether he saw everything. I don't care whether he heard everything. He cannot be a witness because he can't tell us what happened. Oh, yes, he can goes the lawyer. He can because he's a very special dog. He is a talking dog. Don't be ridiculous, goes the judge. I'll have you in, or in, up, up for contempt of court before you know it. Well, prove it, goes the lawyer. And he turns to Fido and he says, Fido, what was your journey like this morning? And Fido goes, rough. And he goes, and um, what is it that you put on top of the walls of a house to stop the rain getting in? And he goes, roof. <laughs> the judge is getting really quite cross now. And then the lawyer says, I know that you're a very holy dog, Fido. Will you tell us who your favourite character in the Bible is? And he goes, roof. <laughs> The judge by now has had enough. He goes absolutely ballistic, throws Fido out and warns the lawyer that he really is in very close to being held up for contempt of court. Now as Fido goes out, he turns to the lawyer and he goes, do you think I should have said Esther? <laughs> so what makes, think about it, so what makes 
a good witness. What do you think makes a good witness? Well, obviously, the first thing is a good witness has to be someone who has experienced the event themselves, who has seen and heard and knows absolutely everything, can speak with conviction, uh, with the conviction of first hand experience. They also have to be someone who is believable, someone who people trust, someone who people know is not making it up, and who they and who has an unblemished record themselves. A good witness has to be able to speak with conviction and with certainty because if there's the slightest wobble, then their story might not be believed. Well, as we heard at the beginning of that reading, John the Baptist was called as a witness. His job was to be a witness to the coming of the Messiah, to the coming of Christ into the world, just as had been promised by all the prophets long ago. He knew that that's what his job was, to be a witness, a herald, someone who pointed everybody in the right direction and says, this is the person, just like a witness in a court of law will point everybody to the truth, or should do, a good witness will point everyone to the truth. So John the Baptist was called to act, to a wit- act as a witness to the coming of Christ and point everyone to the truth of that fact. And he knew that that's what his job was. And he was excited by the fact that he was being called to do it because even though he probably wasn't particularly well educated, he would have been educated to some extent because his father was educated, he knew he knew all about the prophecies from the Old Testament. He knew what Isaiah had said about a com- the coming of a saviour who would bring good news to the poor, healing to the sick, release to the prisoners. And he also knew that he was the one who had been prophesied to actually herald the arrival of that person. Now, as you're probably aware, John the Baptist and Jesus were, you, were um, related. His mother Mary, his mother Elizabeth, was Mary's cousin. They may or may not have seen much of each other, if anything, of each other as they were growing up. But, they, but we know that John would have recognised Jesus when he appeared on the scene. And we know that because before they were born, when Mary, only just pregnant, went to visit Elizabeth, who shouldn't have been pregnant, but was, actually how John the Baptist reacted in his mother's womb when the unborn Christ child came into his presence. He knew that he was special and he knew that Christ was special and he knew that he would recognize him when he came. So he was in no doubt that the Christ was coming. He knew what his background was. He knew that he was a bit of a miracle baby because his mother was very old and his parents hadn't been able to have children. He would have heard the stories from his parents about the fact that he was a gift from God. He would have known how his father had been struck dumb until it came to name him. He would have heard the stories. He would have known that God had been working in his life and bringing him to this point when he could step out and call people to look for the coming of the Saviour. And he knew without a shadow of a doubt that he was going to be able to recognize him when he came and was going to point him out 
to everybody. And he knew that that's what his job was, to act as a signpost. He was happy with that. He was contented with that. In fact, he was rejoicing because of that, because he was part of God's great plan. So that when people came out and asked him about his preaching, he was able to say, no, I am not the Messiah. I'm just getting you ready. I know who the Messiah is. I know he is coming, but I need you to be ready so that you will recognize him and accept him when he comes. I need you to be aware of all your sins and your weaknesses so that you can deal with them because otherwise they are going to form a barrier to you being able to form a relationship with the risen with the Christ. Now, we don't know when John first met Jesus as an adult, but we do know when it is first mentioned in the Bible, and that is at the baptism of Christ. And at that moment, you may remember from the story, John not only recognised Christ, but he actually wanted to be baptised by him rather than doing the baptism himself because his baptism was one of repentance and he knew that Christ had nothing to repent of. But of course, Christ himself needed that baptism for two reasons. Number one, as with any baptism, it marked the beginning of a new part in his journey on this world, in this world. It marked the beginning of his formal ministry. But it also allied him with the whole of fallen humanity. It showed that not only was he fully human, but that he was prepared to be counted as fully human and therefore fallible. Now, you should all have been given a copy of this wonderful painting by Piero della Francesca. Is that how you pronounce it, Jilly? Yeah. Um, and you will see from this wonderful picture, um, and Jilly has written some stuff on the back of it for us, and you will see that it's John really does recognise Christ when he comes. You can see that although there are countless other people queuing up to be baptised, there is something about Christ. And this picture points to Christ as being special, as being the Messiah, as being the one who is equipped with the Holy Spirit. You see the Spirit hovering above him. There is a calmness about the whole painting and Christ himself is at the centre of it. And you could say that John the Baptist with his hand over Christ's head about to anoint him with the waters from the river, you could say that's another way of pointing him out, of being a witness to who the Messiah truly is and was. Now, I wonder, how good are we at pointing out Christ in the world? I wonder, what sort of witnesses to his presence in the world are we? John the Baptist was quite capable of being very forceful, but he was also capable of being humble. And he was definitely capable of being joyful and of being peaceful, just like you see him here. These are all marks of a good witness, especially a good witness to Christ. So I call on all of you to think about what sort of witnesses you are. And 
I call on all of you to look for Christ working in the world and to point out his coming to all those around us and to be joyful as you do so. So we move on to the Nicene Creed. And uh, if you remain seated, because it's safer that way, as we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I now ask John Robson to lead us in our prayers. Lord, as we continue through the season of Advent, for the coming of Christ in glory, and for our time of preparation, let us pray. We pray for your church in these parishes, and in all churches everywhere, especially where those who, whose worship who do not fear who fear of prosecution. We pray also for those whose ministry calls them to lead us in our worship. May we be alert to God's presence and awake to hear Christ's call to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to your world as King of the Nations. We pray that their rulers may be awakened to work towards a world where all are fed, sheltered, and treated equally as God's people. We pray for our sovereign Queen Elizabeth and her family. We pray for her parliament and the rulers of all nations, that they may bring justice and, justice and peace through all their lands. Before you, Lord, all rulers on earth will stand in silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Come to your world as we pray that your presence here will be felt as we prepare for Christmas tide. We pray for the fellowship of our friends and our neighbours. We remember this week those living in Grig Lane. May we be watchful at this time for the many ways God comes to us. We wait and prepare ourselves now for the coming of your Son. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
We pray for all those in need of any kind of healing. Come to them as saviour and comforter. And we pray for your healing hand to be upon them, especially those known to us in these parishes. Break into our lives where we struggle with sickness and distress and set us free to serve you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come to us as shepherd and guardian of our souls. We remember all those known to us who have departed this life. Dolly Rose, Joan Nixon, Kitty Brand, Paul Scathebrook, Joyce Hemmings. And we pray also for their families and friends. Give them hope and courage for the future. Give us, with all the faithful departed, a share in your victory over evil and death. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Come, Lord, and prepare us to see the coming of your kingdom. We watch and we pray for your presence with us. Hear our prayers today as we prepare ourselves for the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lift us up to meet you, like with St. Peter, St. Paul, and with all your saints, we may live and reign with you in your new creation. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, John. Would you like to stand for the peace? In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those that dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Thank you. Would you like to offer one another um, a sign of the peace, either virtually or in person? You know, I think you're getting more comfortable doing that. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite nice seeing you do it. You actually see more people, believe it or not. Now, I think you're exchanging the peace with more people because you're looking around and you're not charging around. Anyway, would you like to sit down for our next hymn? As we hear, as we heard, John the Baptist was excited and definite and committed and joyful and all those other things when he realised that Christ was coming and his job was to point people to him. Let's remember that with our next hymn, On Jordan's Bank, The Baptist Cried.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. Sorry, you're on Eucharistic. We're on Eucharistic prayer one. Sorry. I'll start that bit again. It is always right to give you thanks, God our Creator, loving and faithful holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. You sent your Son to live among us, Jesus, our Saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose in glory from the dead. And you sent your Spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we join the angels to celebrate and say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friends. He took bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new this is my blood, the promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Pour out your Spirit on us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth, and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. For honour and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper.
body of Christ. Amen. body of Christ. The 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 body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. of Christ.
our God. Make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. John the Baptist recognized Jesus when he appeared for him in front of him for baptism. He knew exactly who he was out of all the other people filing filing in. He recognized Jesus. He'd been expecting him. He'd been waiting for him. He knew he was coming. Do we expect to see Jesus? Will we recognize him? When he comes, I hope we'll be joyful when he does. Let us ponder on those things as we listen or maybe hum to our final hymn, Hark, Thou Long Expected Jesus. Yeah. 